I've just spent the last week post-processing this helmet and T-Rex skull. It was a struggle at times, but I'm thrilled with the results. Let me show you how I did it. When I was reviewing the CR10 Max, I produced these two large prints, but they weren't quite right, so I pledged in a future video to fix them up. A little while ago, a company called 3D Gloop got in contact with me for me to test out their products. I told them I had this in the pipeline, so it was a perfect match. Looking at the printed objects, we can see the several issues that I'm trying to fix up. The T-Rex has some subtle layer shifts where I had to change filaments. It's got a fair bit of stringing, and the end color filament is actually different to the rest of the skull. Looking at the helmet, which was sculpted for me by Markham 3 d and that's linked in the description, we can see that some of the smaller details weren't produced that well by the large nozzle I had on the CR10 Max. There's some general rough bits on the edges. There's also some gaps that will need strengthening. And the shallow surfaces on the top where the support material was holding it up are really quite rough. The other thing with this helmet was because of a mishap of my own, I had to do it in two pieces. And at the moment it's just hot glued together loosely. So I'll be breaking that apart and then adhering it together properly. Let's start by having a closer look at what 3D Gloop is. 3D Gloop is a liquid that can be used for 3D printing in three ways. Firstly, as an adhesive, which is particularly strong because it melts and bonds the two plastics together, kind of like welding with metal. Secondly, as an adhesive to help your first layer bond with the bed and prevent warping. And thirdly, as a matter of smoothing, particularly on PLA, where we can't acetone smooth like we could with ABS. Their website, in my opinion, is quite informative. It has a really good FAQ page covering shipping as well as how to use the product. It has a detailed how-to section which we'll be following in this video to cover the three uses of 3D Gloop. And very importantly, it's got a really nice health and safety page. And here it outlines very clearly the potential hazards of the product and the steps that you should take to ensure you stay safe. In this video, I'll be testing the little bottle for PLA as well as the adhesive. You can also buy it in bulk with various sizes. And it's worth noting that a little while ago they had a Kickstarter for a spray-on version. From memory, I think I tried to back this, but it didn't ship to Australia. I'm going to start with something unusual, and that's by explaining my limitations. I'll happily pour hours into designing something on CAD, but when it comes to sanding, my patience runs out really fast. My aim for the T-Rex skull is to weather it, as if it was just dug up from the ground. Whereas for the helmet, I want that to be as glossy, smooth, and perfect as possible. To achieve this, I'm aiming to apply some well-known tricks to remove obvious artifacts. I'm looking for minimal surface sanding, and then I'm hoping to apply the 3D glue to smooth the surface and melt away the layer lines. I did take the safety warning seriously and got myself a bag of nitrile gloves, a respirator with the appropriate filter after talking to the person in the shop, and also used my safety glasses. Time to get to work then, and the first job was to use a blade to separate the two halves of the helmet where I previously hot glued them together. This part of the job was quite straightforward and it wasn't long until I had three separate pieces ready to glue back together. While they were apart, I took advantage of this and used this print cleanup tool from AMX3D, which I reviewed some time ago. It was excellent for scraping off little zits and blobs. The T-Rex had different artifacts, mainly fine stringing, and I used the age old technique of using a heat gun to melt these away instantly. This also works with a hairdryer, it just takes a little bit longer. The other obvious thing that I addressed on the skull was getting rid of some little bumps in the joining area. And for this, I simply used a small file to grind them away quickly. Back to the helmet. And the way it was designed means there was a lot of shells that were only just intersecting. Therefore, I used a 3D pen with matching filament to weld the seams together and eliminate the gaps, making the whole thing a lot stronger. This is a quick and easy solution to joining together various parts of 3D prints and because I've done it on the inside, the outside is unaffected visually. Because I'm impatient, here's the first of my secret weapons. This is known as a power file or a finger sander, and I'm using it just to take down the really high areas. But of course with PLA, this is fraught with danger as the plastic will melt from the friction, so you can only sand off a little bit at a time to avoid damaging the model. I also use this file on the top of the helmet where the shallow curvature made the layer lines particularly evident. When all of this was done, I broke out the glue version of the 3D Gloop. After sanding the two mating sides with 100 grit sandpaper, I applied a decent amount but not too much, before carefully mating the two halves together. 
It's meant to be only a matter of seconds before it grabs really tightly and starts to stay in place. So you need to be very careful and precise with your placement. You're also meant to clamp it while it dries. That was impossible for me with this shape. So I did the next best thing by holding it in my hand and pushing it together hard for around 10 minutes. After a little bit more hand sanding on top, I figured my model was ready to go and I was keen to see how effective the 3D glue would be at melting these layer lines and imperfections together. The instructions recommend working in a small area at a time and brushing parallel to the layer lines to help everything blend in. I started from the top down, wearing my respirator gloves and working on a piece of sacrificial foam so I wouldn't damage my table. It probably took around 20 minutes to work my way around the helmet, completing one panel at a time as designed into the helmet by Markham 3D. I tried to keep my brush strokes as long as possible and the glue as thin as possible, both as per the directions, but I found it difficult but I'm sure it would be easier with some more practice. The T-Rex skull was done in much the same way, but due to the contour geometry, I was forced to work on smaller areas at a time, especially around bits like the teeth. As both of these models were printed with 0.4mm layer height, I thought it fair to put some 3D glue on for smoothing on the more common 0.2mm layer height. These were some old test cylinders and I did it across two brands of filament and three different colours. After this, I finished off the larger portion of the T-Rex skull before setting it aside to dry, giving it the required three hours, with the helmet done earlier in the day, giving me time to apply a second coat. I imagine people might be interested in how much glue I used, and the answer is a bottle and a half for one coat on the T-Rex and two coats on the helmet. Unfortunately, the results were not really what I was expecting. There was an even coating of the glue, but it seemed to be on the outside and it didn't seem to really chemically affect the filament. As you can see in this helmet, the layer lines and artifacts are still quite prominent. And it was the same for the pearl white PLA. Some brush bristles had broken off, which is not ideal, but my main concern was the layer lines, which looked like they were all still there underneath the shiny coating. The 0.2mm layer height test prints were marginally improved. I think a little bit of smoothing has taken place, but it's hard to get a consistent finish with the brush. This orange one is a different brand and was much the same. I reached out to 3D Gloop and shared my results, and I received, in my opinion, a very impressive response. It was polite, detailed, and gave me a range of tips on how I could make the most out of the product. I'm willing to accept my results are the exception and not the rule, and here's why. There's enough great videos on YouTube showing this product working as intended, like this one from Joel from 3D Printing Nerd, where he uses 3D Gloop as an adhesive and it's able to hold his and his son's body weight. And this one by Devon from Make Anything, where he uses it to smooth PLA and the result is simply stunning. These are both great videos and they're linked down below in the description. What can I say? I've wasted a day's worth of work and I haven't reached my goal for these prints. One thing I would say is that the brush on application is not that easy and that the new spray loop that's meant to be on the way should be a tremendous improvement. So where to now? Well, I've been to the hardware store and I've picked up myself a range of fillers, paints and sanding sponges. So I guess we're going to have to do this old school. Let's continue with the project. Let's quickly update the plan. My limitations are still the same and I'm still going for the same effect on both objects. But this time I'll be using putty and filler to remove layer lines, sanding it back and then painting with specialist paint. My main filler will be timber filler. A quick Google while I was at the hardware store said this would probably be effective. I've also got this spray filler, but it is for gyp rock and drywall, so I'm not really expecting it to work. For sanding, I'll be using sponges. They're flexible and are much easier to get around contoured surfaces. The T-Rex is getting ultra matte white paint to look as close to bone as possible before weathering. And the helmet is getting this forged hammered paint and primer all in one. It lists plastic as a potential material, but what I'm most excited about is the galvanized finish that should hide imperfections and give it a genuine metal appearance. I started by hand sanding the top of the helmet with the roughest grade of sanding sponge. However, it wasn't long until I started to get impatient. Enter another power tool, this time a random orbital sander. The beauty of this compared to a regular orbital sander is it's not really spinning that fast and therefore it doesn't really overheat the plastic. This wasn't as relevant, however, because one advantage of working over the top of 3D Gloop is that it had set hard and was protecting the plastic underneath. After sanding around half of the surfaces, I started to use the timber putty. This stuff is really easy to use and being water-based means it's non-toxic. On something round, I like to use my finger and I have a bowl of water to the side to make it a little bit wetter and help it spread where need be. It didn't actually take too long before I'd puttied everything I'd sanded so far 
concentrating especially on the join between the pieces I had to glue back together. Another nice thing about wood filler is that it dries quite fast, sometimes only 10 minutes. Because of the dust coming up from this, I'd recommend still wearing a mask or a respirator with the appropriate filter. Around this time, I made the decision to cut off the little features on the side. I actually quite liked them in the design, but they didn't print very well, and I wasn't prepared to put in the time to get them looking immaculate. Therefore, off they came before I sanded, puttied, and sanded again the side surfaces. The T-Rex was the target of my testing for the spray filler. I don't know if I've mentioned this already, but I'm pretty impatient with these things and there was no way I was going to sand all of the surfaces. As expected, this stuff didn't really go on well, it didn't really stick. This was particularly evident after it had dried. It came off with sandpaper, but even when I rubbed it with my finger. I brushed off the excess and turned my attention to using the putty, which seemed to have worked quite well on the helmet. This took a few hours to apply and I really caked it on, leaving it thick and with a little bit of texture as I want this to look like it's been dug up from the ground. After letting it dry and sanding it back, bits like the teeth really didn't look great at all, but the main part of the skull and the jaw had my desired surface finish. Close to no layer lines, overall fairly smooth but still with a little bit of random texture. My secret weapon in the weathering was a little bit of cold coffee. I saw this on a tested video with Adam Savage, which is listed in the video description. But I wanted to go one step further and make it look like it had been excavated. So I got my favorite pink bucket and collected some soil from the front yard. Weathering as a process is actually quite simple. You get whatever you're staining with, quite often that's paint, but in my case it's coffee. You coat your object with it and then you get a rag and you attempt to clean it off. What happens is that 90% of it comes off, but little bits are left behind in the inner crevices and this recreates the natural grime that would build up after years of use. In my case, I got the brush and I added a lot of dirt to make mud, focusing especially on all of the cracks and divots, as this is where the dirt would naturally sit after digging it up and attempting to clean it. As you can see, the coffee stain makes it look more like bone, and then the soil in the hard to reach places makes it look more authentic. This was fairly early on, but here's a simple before and after. Time to get on with doing the rest. This process took a little while, but honestly, it's probably the part that I enjoyed the most. And that's because you get such instant results. In a matter of minutes, each part of the model goes from smooth and shiny to looking aged and like it has a story to tell. One tip I have is to check for drips of coffee going to parts of the model that you're not actually working on. They can dry with a big streak, but it is possible to wipe them off later with a damp rag if you miss them initially. As for the helmet, after finishing sanding, putting and sanding the remaining surfaces, it was ready to paint. The paint lived up to what was advertised on the label and was super easy to apply. I'm normally the type of person who puts it on too thick and then has drips, but in this instance at least, I ended up having some sort of self-control. In the end, I applied three coats with no sanding in between and I made sure to wear my respirator during this process. So how did the finished products turn out? Firstly, the T-Rex skull, and it looks just like the bones my dogs leave in the yard. To anyone who knows 3D printing, they'll still be able to see some layer lines as well as the layer shift, but for anyone else, they're going to be wondering where I got this item. The teeth are the worst part, but I think all of the dirt deposits in the cavities do a good job of distracting the eye. Some people will probably hate the style in which I've completed this, but for me it's an original and I'm really happy with it. Now, the helmet. And considering just how rough this was before I started this project, in my opinion, the final result is super slick. You have to get really close before you notice any imperfections, and the dimple effect that came with the paint goes a long way to convincing a viewer that this is not 3D printed. Furthermore, all of those geometric intersections catch the light nicely too. I've got myself another one-of-a-kind piece. So here we are finally at the end, and they're both complete, and I really couldn't be happier with them. Are they perfect? Definitely not. Can you still see the layer lines in places? Absolutely. But both of these have improved out of sight from when they came off the printer. Yes, I know there's people that can do it better than me, but sometimes it's not about being the best. It's about challenging yourself and then being proud of your hard work. As for the 3D Gloop, no, it didn't work for me, but I consider that an anomaly. The company was good to deal with and there's a range of great independent results out there. So if you want to give it a try, it's definitely worth a shot. If you've got any comments or questions, please leave them down below. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing and post-processing.
G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.